um, well, all these adverts, you know, who tell you because you're worth it. And, uh, we really need to, to, to believe it. And it doesn't need to be by applying cosmetics. I've got nothing against them. I use them all the time. But anyway, I digress. Um, you're really here for a variety uh, of reasons because, as I was mentioning in the introduction, you're this uh, first female head of a European mm. Commission representation in an office abroad. Um, you're you know, such an influential uh, Brit who knows these EU institutions uh, so well. So really, what I was thinking is, I mean, the European institutions uh, help to formulate this legislation, but what about uh, looking in-house? What is the percentage... Uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so uh, that beautiful English expression. So what is the proportion of men to women, actually, in uh, the European institutions? Can you enlighten us? Uh, overall, it's about half and half, but that very big ballpark figure conceals lots of differences. Um, there are now two basic grades within the institutions, so-called administrators and so-called assistants. Administrators are graduate entry. So they're um, the executive grade, if you like, in, in the home civil service. And about 42% of those who below managerial level are women. So it's quite a high percentage of women. But if you look in the top three grades, so right at the top of the organisation, we've only reached 28%. Why? Well, it's a lot better than it used to be. I, when I joined, and I joined a very long while ago, as you... Um, as you pointed out, I think there were less than 10% of women in the top grades. Now, you can always look at these things as being the glass half full or the glass half empty. The so-called vivier, which is a lovely French expression, the, 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 the talent pool, uh, is growing. And the optimists amongst my colleagues believe that eventually, because there are so many women now entering the institution and moving up through the ranks, inevitably those figures will tip into uh, something much closer to equality. The pessimists say it's still, there is still a glass ceiling, a glass ceiling and glass walls. Uh, you find quite often that women managers are in particular categories of work. So they do, for example, human resource management or coordination tasks rather than necessarily the hard policy jobs. Um, and at the very top of the organisation, there are still few women directors general. That is the, the, the very highest grade. Although the highest civil servant in the commission is a woman and has been for the last uh, six or seven years. So I think we, 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 internally we set ourselves targets. We have action plans. There are specific training courses to encourage women to apply for management positions. It's also a rather family-friendly institution, uh, both for men and for women, in terms of part-time working, in terms of family leave, uh, in terms of being able to, to work from home occasionally. Uh, and the one big change I think I would see in the course of my career is that young women who um, are now having their children feel that their career is much less threatened by taking advantage mm -hmm. of some of these uh, family-friendly provisions. I can remember when I had my kids, um, if you took extra leave, if you went part-time, uh, there was a feeling that you were regarded as not being very serious about your career. Uh, you know, you know, you're contenting yourself with uh, staying at a certain level in the organisation. And I think young women and to a certain extent young men today, young mothers and fathers, don't feel as threatened by um, the taking the, the either extra, extra leave or going part-time for a certain period to look after their children. And I think that's very positive. Yes, those things are very positive, but how? it's not a very big jump. Was it from 10% to 28 Yes. Over a, I think a no, it's less than, I think it was about seven percent. So it's a twenty. Yeah. Isn't it? So it's taken a long time yeah. to do to do that jump. So on the one hand, it's good that they yeah. they don't feel uh, that they're not being serious because they're actually choosing to stay uh, at home yeah. and look after their children when they're en bas âge, as we say in French, when they're small. But um, it it's, it is somewhat very slow progress, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's too slow for me personally, um, and I. And possibly one of the worrying things, you can always say there are positives and there are negatives. 
The positive is the number of women which are getting to the top of the organisation, and I think 30% compares quite well with the British civil service, for example. Uh, but if you look at the next layer down, middle management, it's about the same. So it's not as if you're building a pyramid where there are more candidates reaching middle management mm. who are then uh, aspiring to, to top management. Uh, and I think that's slightly worrying. Um, what is, you know, again, on the positive side is that we have a kind of age bulge at the top of the organisation. Age bulge. You know, bulge. There's a, yes, there's a, a group of senior managers now who will reach retirement age and leave the commission. Big, large numbers within the next uh, five years. So that will create some liquidity, some... Uh, but will that liquidity be filled by women uh, or by, that's by men? That's the acid test. So that will be the, the proof acid of the test. pudding, as you said. Yes. Well, I hope it won't be acidic when we come back to revisit this subject uh, <laughs> and have a nasty aftertaste. I hope that we'll see a uh, huge improvement. It, uh, sorry to ask possibly what is an extremely stupid question. Is there, apart from plans, action plans mm -hmm. or anything, because one of the problems I think certainly as a journalist I often see in very well-intentioned programs are sometimes a very dry language. And yeah. one of the things about uh, Mumsnet is that engaging with people. Um, what about mentoring? Is that yeah. quite strong? It's there. It's a, certainly something I tried Ooh, to do. I don't like that. It's yeah. there. No, it is there. That's a bit worrying. And I did, it's I, did it. I did it, and I wouldn't claim that this is cause and effect, but in my last job, I started off with six heads of unit, five of whom were men. When I left three weeks ago, five of them were women. Wow. Well, congratulations to so, you. <laughs> small step. And I, I think, you know, you have to encourage... Uh, this is... Difficult because it gets into gender stereotyping. But the classic um, statement is that the man will look at a job advert and see one thing that he fulfills and will apply. I saw that survey. And, the and a woman, woman will see one category where maybe she doesn't quite make the grade and will say, ah, oh, I'm not qualified. I won't apply. So do actually the people who are doing the recruiting need to be more aware of that yes. and think, ah, oh, uh, sorry, at the risk of gender stereotyping as well, of saying, well, actually, maybe the woman is undervaluing herself and not selling herself in the way that the man is. And to look more carefully, actually, at what her experience is and her... Exactly. Yeah. I think there are two, two, th two or three things. First of all, we are encouraging more women to apply. You need to get women at quite an early stage in their careers to say, this is possible, you can do this, and uh, you should be aspiring to these jobs, if you want them, not everybody wants them, either men or women, but if you want them, go for it. Secondly, we have to look at job adverts. Um, and I, um, at one point mm. as well, something not on my CV, I was chairing the Equal Opportunities Committee uh, within the Commission, uh, which is a staff uh, administration joint committee. And one of the things we did was look at a sample of job vacancy adverts. And there is a lot of cloning going on. Cloning. Yes. So you, the person who's just left the job ah. recruits somebody like uh, recruits them. the him. exact Maybe. same person. And yeah. if it was a him, and he had oh, right. typically male skills, then probably what is advertised is a set of skills, which again you mm -hmm. know, one doesn't want to stereotype, but mm -hmm. typically uh, would be found more likely in a male candidate than a female candidate. So I think there's a, that's something else you have to change. You have to persuade people that you can do jobs in different ways, but still make a success. And very briefly, them. sorry, picking up on that idea of um, non-job cloning, were you able to not just change the specific things while you were there, but leave a legacy of other people behind you not, uh, not doing that either? I certainly hope so. I think these, the, the five heads of unit I leave behind are a great legacy. Excellent. Well, that's a really good positive story. You wanted to say something. Right?